Well, good morning, everyone, and Happy New Year. We are so glad that you're here at Asbury's Modern Worship uh, Service. My name's Robert, Robert Mercer, and I'm one of the pastors here on our team. And, and one of the things I get to do here at Asbury is I get to lead uh, in, in this wonderful service. And we are just thankful that you are here. Uh, Reverend Michael Bowman, our, our Minister of Discipleship, is going to be uh, assisting in the service today. And one of the things that we say quite a bit around here is that everyone's valuable, everyone has something to bring, so let's give God our very best. Now, that manifests its way in, in so many different aspects of how we do things. Like today is Communion Sunday, and on Communion Sundays, our kids uh, stay in worship. We don't do children's church on Communion Sundays because we believe that being a part of the church family is one of the ways that helps people stick in their faith. And so parents, don't, don't, don't get too anxious. We got some worship bags in the back of the room, and we're okay if they get loud. Uh, it's not going to disrupt us. We are so thankful that kids are here. Uh, there's something that I want to put on your radar. On February the 5th, we will have a worship night here in Williams Chapel. That's a Sunday night. It'll be led by our modern worship team. And if you weren't able to be at our worship night in the fall, I really encourage you to come for February 5th's worship evening. It's such a wonderful way to dig in and to uh, worship God in new and different ways. So put that on your calendar for February the 5th. One of the ways in which we like to open our worship service is through prayer. Prayer can be a scary thing, it can be a complicated thing, so much so that Jesus' disciples, one of the things they asked him was, teach us to pray. And so when he taught them, he gave them what's called the Lord's Prayer. I think we really should have called it the Disciples' Prayer because he was giving it to them. And we're gonna end our prayer time with that prayer. It'll be on the screen. Uh, for those of you who would, who would like to see it there. Let's pray together. Oh God, at the beginning of this new year, we're already rushing around. Give us an opportunity to just take a breath, be fully present with you and with each other as we worship you today. Oh God, we pray that as we gather around your table, that we embrace that we are your children. God, thank you for coming today. Oh God, we pray this in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to stand and let's give God our best as we sing together.
may be seated. So we're doing things a little bit different today. Um, we're going to actually have communion here at the beginning. It is a communion Sunday for It's a fun sound. <laughs> But also, uh, this is, liturgically speaking, when we talk about a church calendar, this is a Sunday where we remember the baptism of our Lord. So at the end of the service, we're actually going to take a time to remember our own baptisms. And in light of that, we've kind of pushed communion to the front. So let's prepare for the table now. It was at a table on a holy uh, and much anticipated night of Passover that Jesus made clear what was soon going to happen to him, that he would say yes to God and he would invite all of us into life by his way and by his own death and resurrection. So he was sitting at the table with his disciples, eating the Passover meal and he took bread and after blessing it, he broke it. And he said to his disciples, this is my body, which is given for you. After the supper was over, Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks for it, blessing it. And he gave it to each of his disciples saying, this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And he says, every single time you eat of this bread and drink from this cup, do so in remembrance of me. It's important for us to remember that at this table, we invite everyone. As Methodists particularly, we we practice what's called an open table. That means it's open, not closed. So if you've been baptized in another church, if you're part of a different church tradition, or if you are simply just seeking to know like a little bit about Jesus, if you just want to want to know about Jesus at all, then you are invited to come and take part in this holy meal. Jesus offers each of us abundant life found in the kingdom of God. So that's what we are receiving. Just a taste, a foreshadowing of what that kingdom is like. In a moment, you're going to come forward, and I might be doing totally the opposite of what we talked about, but I'm going to, I'm going to give different logistical instructions. <laughs> if our middle rows would just come down the middle, you're going to go out the side towards... Towards the, towards the windows. <laughs> there we go. And then our outside, you're going to go towards the windows and then up towards the middle. Does that make sense? Got it? Let's pray for a moment. Oh God, we ask that you pour out your spirit on us here and now. On this ordinary bread, thank you, Jeremiah. On this ordinary bread and ordinary juice, making them the body and blood of Christ, would you make us, through your spirit, one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until we are with Jesus again, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. All honor and glory is yours, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. If our communion servers would join me at the front. So we've talked a little bit of logistics. We're gonna serve our servers and then I'm gonna give us a couple other further instructions and then we'll be ready. So we talked about how you're gonna come forward, um, but I wanna say there are kneelers on the side. So as you do take and receive, Feel free to take a moment to pause, to pray, to kneel, to be silent before the Lord. You can also do that in your seats, but we're going to continue in worship. So as you go back to your seats, we do want to invite you to go ahead and stand. We're going to keep singing, keep worshiping God with our song. And um, are we ready? As the communion servers get in place, then you can come forward. Amen.
So we have a new song for our worship service this morning. Some of you may have heard this before, uh, but it leads right off with the chorus. So we're going to dive right in and sing this song together. We turn to Jesus. We turn to Jesus. God, we return to you just like the morning. Your mercy's always new. You're waiting for us, drawing our hearts to you. We turn to Jesus. God, we return. We return to you. Friends. 
essence of your glory we are found we awaken to the joy of heaven's sound and the song that you sing over us is love we are known we are known in the presence of your people The song that you sing over us is love, this love. Hey, we turn to Jesus. God, we return to you. Just like the morning, the younger is always new. You're waiting for us, drawing our hearts to you. We turn to Jesus. The song that you sing over us is love. Hey, we turn to Jesus. God, we return to you. Just like the morning, your mercy is always new. You're waiting for us, drawing our hearts to you. the joy that we've been kind of experiencing and singing through, would you go ahead and greet one another and pass the peace of Christ? Say hello to somebody, high five, throw a peace sign, say hi.
right. Well, like Robert said, my name is Michael Bowman, one of the uh, pastors on this pastoral team here at Asbury, and it is good to be with you in worship. A couple of announcements. One is we have Asbury Engaged coming up on the last Sunday of the month. I believe that's the 29th. Uh, if you are just interested in getting more plugged in, learning more about this church, or if you're looking to take a route towards membership here at Asbury, then that would be the lunch for you. Uh, your pastors and some of our staff will be there as well. You get to eat a free lunch. Um, so who doesn't like free food? You can come to that. It'll be right after this service down in one of the rooms downstairs that I can't remember the number of, but it's downstairs. We can take you there after the service and we'll eat together, talk about Asbury and find ways that you can get more plugged in as well. Register is online at asburybham.org and you should be able to find registration from that page. Also, there are uh, these little binders at the end of your pew. Our attendance pads are inside those. If you would go ahead and grab one, and then log your attendance. You can do it manually with the pen inside or you can scan the QR code and do it on your phone. We would love to know that you are here, but I wanna draw your attention to the two cards right there on the inside. There's a blue one. It's our welcome card. And this is for any of you who might be a first time guest, but even if you have been visiting for a while and just never filled one of these out, we would encourage you to do that. You can meet me out back after this service at the welcome desk right by the doors that you walked in. And uh, turn this in, and you get a free gift from us to you, just saying thanks for worshiping with us today. There's also a red card that's pretty important to us. It's our prayer request card. So if you or someone you know needs prayer, if you've been praying on your own and would love others to join in with you, there could be any number of reasons for you to fill this out. But would you fill that out? We would love to pray for you. This gets into our hands when the baskets go around um, for the giving of our tithes and offerings later in the service. You can just drop that in there and it'll make its way to your pastoral team as well as our prayer team. And we actually do every single week pray over each and every prayer request that's submitted. So if we need to follow up, there's a place there for some of your information and we can follow up with you as well. I think announcement wise, that's it. Um, so I'd like to transition into the time of reading of scripture. So if you have a Bible or a phone that you'd like to open the app up on, it'll also be up on the screen. We're gonna be in the gospel of Matthew today. Matthew chapter three, beginning with verse 13. Our gospel author writes, at that time, Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan River so that John would baptize him. John tried to stop him and said, I need to be baptized by you, yet you come to me. And Jesus answered, allow me to be baptized now. This is necessary to fulfill all righteousness. So John agreed to baptize Jesus. And when Jesus was baptized, he immediately came up out of the water. Heaven was open to him and he saw the spirit of God coming down like a dove and resting on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my son whom I dearly love. I find happiness in him. And may God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing and understanding of scripture hearts and minds are open. Amen. You know, the, the, the names that you give yourself are so powerful, aren't they? Uh, some of them uh, we, we didn't choose. Some of them people gave to us. Uh, some of them really lift us up while others kind of tear us down. Whatever the case, the names you give yourself are powerful. Uh, many names that we have kind of generate these uncomfortable feelings. Do you know what I mean? Uh, When I was in high school, uh, my nickname was Bobo. Now, as an eighth grader, I was trying to figure out uh, who I wanted to be in high school, and 
My neighbor across the street, Derek, was in ROTC, and I thought that sounded like fun, and so I signed up for that. And the summer before my freshman year, Derek said, hey, some of us from ROTC are going to be playing football at the high school. Why don't you come and meet some people? And I was like, man, that's a great idea. I'll already know some folks before I go on to, to campus. And I told my mom, well, ask my mom if I could uh, go and play football at the high school. And she said, yeah, just don't take your new shoes. And I thought, to myself now, she shouldn't have to say that, right? But I was an eighth grader who was going into ninth grade. So it's probably pretty smart of her to say, don't take your good shoes. So I go in my closet and I get these old beat up cheap shoes and I head off with my friend Derek to the high school. Now, if you're not familiar with ROTC, ROTC is a um, military class or organization to help prepare folks who might want to have a career in the military or, or people who might just be interested in that field. And the ROTC uh, group would elect its leadership from, from those who qualify to, to, to lead uh, the other cadets. The highest position you could have is company commander. And, and he was there on that day we were playing football and my friend Derek introduced me to this guy who has tremendous influence uh, they can really set the tone and culture of, of the entire uh, organization. And he looked at me, and he, he, he looked at my shoes, and he looked back at me, and he said, Bobos make your feet feel fine. Bobos cost a dollar and a dime. Now, don't, this was 1984. Don't judge him. He was not trying to be mean. He was just trying to be funny. Well, the name stuck for four years. My name was Bobo. And luckily for me, what started off as kind of an awkward uh, high school moment and this uncomfortable kind of derogatory word became a nickname of endearment. I became the company commander my senior year. And I want you to know that Robert got 20 votes and Bobo got 35 <laughs> votes. <clears throat> We often have an identity crisis because we have so many names that we place on ourselves. We're, we're parents, we're siblings, we're students, we're friends, we're athletes. I mean, the list just goes on and on. And some of the names that we put on ourselves or, or that we take, we have to earn like a doctor or a lawyer. Uh, and our scripture that, that Michael read for us today promises that no matter how powerful our earthly names are, they do not define us. As Jesus followers, we're given the name that really matters. People dearly loved by God. Uh, today is uh, a day in which the church looks at the baptism of Jesus. And, and the account we read from the Gospel of Matthew, but you can find the account of Jesus' baptism in every, each four of the Gospels. And from the earliest of Christian uh, communities, there's been quite... Um, uh, differencing, difference of opinions and what to do with Jesus' baptism. Uh, you can see this in how all four of them say something a little bit different about the baptism of Jesus. Now, even though it was confusing to them, they still, all four of them, found it necessary to put it in their gospel writings. This makes sense to me. I have even had the thought, why did Jesus have to be baptized at all? Surely it wasn't because uh, he was um, asking forgiveness for his sins. Uh, and surely it wasn't because John was a greater teacher 
and mentor than Jesus. But why is it? Now, each one of the Gospels has their own take, but all of them have this thread of Jesus' baptism signifies Jesus' identity. That he is loved by God and that he is the son of God. Uh, In all of the gospel accounts, Jesus is baptized before he starts his public ministry. Now in the gospel of John, uh, he is baptized and then he calls his disciples. Now in the other three, he's baptized, then he's tested in the wilderness before calling his disciples. But in all four, it's apparent that Jesus' identity comes before the mission. The knowledge of who you are and what God names you comes before the mission that we have in the world. Let's look at verse 16 and 17. When Jesus was baptized, he immediately came up out of the water. Heaven opened up to him, and he saw the Spirit of God coming down like a dove and resting on him. A voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I dearly love. I find happiness in him. This voice came down so that all could hear that Jesus was the Son of God. Now, now Matthew draws from some Old Testament language here, uh, specifically Psalm 2, verse 7, and Isaiah 42, verse 1, I find happiness in him. Or it could also be translated, he is my favorite. I just love that. Uh, One of my favorite uh, fiction books that helps us see a glimpse of God's nature is the book called The Shack. Now, stay with me for a moment. Notice I called it a fiction book. This book was not written in order to be a biblically accurate account of things. It was written to show us a glimpse of what God's nature could be. And I really connected with the author's description of God and how God works in the world. And and let me tell you why. I grew up uh, having Sunday dinners at my grandmother's where my grandmother would be in the kitchen cooking Sunday dinner and talking about faith and life. So it's not a stretch for me. If you've read The Shack, you know the God character is is a woman who is wearing an apron and cooking in the kitchen. So that was not a leap for me at all. And one of the things God in the shack often says about people is, I'm especially fond of you. Or, he's my favorite. I just think that's really cool. God loves us just as we are. We don't do anything to earn it. God is already fond of you. God already finds happiness in you. God already loves us. Uh, that, that's why, you notice Michael during communion, he, he talked about us having an open communion and he said it so brilliantly. That's why we have an open communion because everyone's welcome at God's table. We can only live into who God desires us to be to the extent that we embrace that we are dearly loved by God. Baptism is nothing less than the promise that God finds happiness in us, that we 
are his favorite, that God is fond of us. No matter where we go, no matter what we do, God is fond of us and God loves us and God will not abandon us. Uh, I talk a lot in here about bridging the gap, you know, um, for those of you that have been around, you've heard me say that that is um, becoming closer to the person that God desires us to be. That, that we take one step closer to becoming who God wants us to be. And I don't say this near enough, and I'll try to do better in 2023, but sometimes I think that we can think that we bridge the gap so that we can find favor in God and so that God will love us, and that is just not the case. The reason why we bridge the gap and the reason why we want to grow closer to who God wants us to be is in response to God's unexplainable, unimaginable love. Our living into who God desires us to be doesn't earn us anything. It's a reflection of a God who already loves us. Now, one of the tools the church has used over time to help people embrace that, that they are loved by God is to remember your baptism. Now, <clears throat> baptism is a recognition that we are one of God's kids. Uh, there are different ways in which churches celebrate this wonderful symbol of, of God's grace, but they can be found in really two categories. So I'm not going to break down all the ways in which we baptize, but two categories, a believer's baptism and an infant baptism. Now, a believer's baptism are churches that celebrate baptism when the person identifies that they want to be a follower of Jesus and they come forward and it's a mark of God's grace on their life that, that they have invited God into their life and are now participating in what God wants us to do. Churches that practice infant baptism believe that God's grace isn't dependent on anything we do. It's not dependent on us. Therefore, there's never a time which one is old enough, smart enough, or good enough to deserve it. Now, you won't be surprised because us Methodists, we're, we're middle way kind of people. We practice both. <laughs> now, our, our main way of practicing is infant baptism. That's what we encourage folks. But we also practice believers baptism as well. We practice both because we understand that baptism is a mystery of God's grace. And when we remember our baptism, we remember that God loves us no matter what. I want to look at just a couple ways in which we can remember our baptism. One of the things that, that we can do to help us keep our true identity is to remember the waters of our baptism. In the, in the Old Testament, a baptism was practiced as a, a cleansing tool, a way to cleanse you of your sin. Now, we, uh, we, we don't use the word sin out in the culture. We'll use it in the church from time to time, but we don't talk about it a lot in the culture. Uh, and, and for one, the church has abused what sin really means. Sin just means missing the mark. Sin is what we use to describe when we are letting other names get in the way of our identity in Christ. You know, in our culture, uh, we've fallen to what uh, Kara Powell at Fuller Seminary in California calls the gospel of sin management. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, I grew up believing that I had to go to bed at night and I better confess everything I did wrong uh, in case I died in my sleep. 
so I was covered. Now, this way of thinking, it distorts the reality of how God works in our life. God doesn't work like that. It, it, this way of thinking makes people feel as if there's nothing they'll be able to do to earn God's love. And so they give up. And they don't even try. And that's not how it works at all. Remembering that we are covered by the love of Jesus through the waters of our baptism helps us have the courage to truly change our hearts and minds. It inspires us to have the courage to bridge the gap and become closer to who God wants us to be. Uh, I'm going to look at a couple of different parts of our traditional baptismal covenant that you can just go down the hall and find in the hymnal if you want to look at it. And because it says what we as people have thought about baptism for a long time. Here's what it says about the water of baptism. Uh, usually the pastor or an assistant will say, pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water in those who receive it to wash away their sin, to clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives. What I'm about to say might sound a bit weird. Just hang with me for a minute. When you encounter water in your life, remember your baptism. When you take a shower or, or a nice hot bath, you're getting clean, right? Remember that God is fond of you, that God loves you, that God has made you clean. Uh, family is another reminder of our true identity. Uh, when Tracy and I presented our kids, uh, Hannah and Drew, for baptism, it was a profound experience for us. Uh, again, let me read from our baptismal covenant. W will you nurture these children? This is to the parents. Uh, will you nurture these children in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example, they may be guided to accept God's grace for themselves, to profess their faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? When we presented our kids for Christian baptism, we were saying we are going to be a part of this faith journey with you. We are going to partner with you as we go through life together. Um, one of the things that, that our team likes to talk about, and if you have a child or youth, hopefully you've heard them say it, that the parents are the most influential person in a kid's spiritual life. Kenda Creasy Dean, in her book, Almost Christian, said, uh, if you want your kid to get serious about their spiritual life, then get serious about your spiritual life. One of the things I think that we can do, starting right now, to help us get serious about our spiritual life is begin to have conversations about life and faith in the home. It's one of the most significant things that we can do. All right, I want to take a little bit of a time out and acknowledge that families are not perfect. My family, our family is definitely not perfect. Uh, chaos uh, rules the home a lot more than tranquility. And for some folks, family dynamics are unhealthy and they're even sometimes volatile. If that's you, I've got some good news. You are not alone. You have an extended community that will walk through life with you. We are living in the most loneliest time in human history. And for us to embrace our name and our true identity in Christ, we need to remember our community. We need to remember that we are surrounded by each other, 
that we are not alone in this world. Uh, this is why our, our senior pastor, Mike Holly, has developed a relationship series that starts next week called Real Relationships. So that we can begin to build real relationships with each other, within our families, so that we can walk with each other in this world. The church offers real hope for a world that is in desperate need of it. My last excerpt from our baptismal covenant, at, toward the end, uh, depending on who's the pastor, uh, and they'll do it in different ways, but a lot of times they'll have the congregation say together these words, uh, with God's help, we proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these persons with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. I want to invite the band to come up as we close this, this time of our service when we remember our baptism, we remember that the purpose of our church community is to be there for each other. We remember that everyone's important and that everyone has something to bring. So we're going to bring our best. You know, when we bring our best, then God really just shows out. <laughs> When we bring our best, we're able to connect with each other and God in ways that we could have never even thought of. I hope that you will make the year of 2023 the year that you own the reality of your name, that you're a child of God who God dearly loves who God already at this moment finds happiness in, and you're his favorite. Uh, as we were talking about it this week, uh, I get the privilege of, of hanging out with Jeremiah every Tuesday, and we're talking about this scripture, and, and he'll just throw some insights in that are just awesome, and I had to share this one with you. He said, God doesn't put up with you. He's proud of you. The names you give yourself are powerful. Are you just hanging on to those names that really don't matter? You don't have to. The only name that matters is child of God, dearly loved. Let's pray. God, we just thank you for giving us a place and a community to work together. Oh God, be with us. Help us to remember our baptism and that you dearly love us. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, as we worship through our giving, I want to challenge you in 2023 to to, to approach giving a little bit differently. What, what do you need to give? Maybe it's your time. Maybe it's just volunteering on a team here in Modern or, or anywhere in the church. Maybe it's using your talents to sing, play an instrument, be on our tech team with Tony. Maybe it's your, your, your resources. Maybe it's time to start giving those up a little bit so that the good news can be spread in our community and around the world. Whatever it is, I want you to pray and think about how 2023 might be different. Let's stand. Let's sing together.
Uh, this year, you're gonna hear me say at the end of the service a lot, let's linger longer, meaning we wanna build community with each other. You don't have to rush out the door. You can uh, meet somebody you don't know and hang out for a few minutes. Today, after the benediction, uh, if you choose, we have opportunity for you to remember your baptism. Jeremiah and I will, will be down here and you can just come forward and we'll make uh, the mark of the cross on your forehead and, and give you a, a small blessing and there's kneelers you can pray just to remember that you are the people of God. Go from this place without any shame, timidity, or fear to know that you're God's favorite. Amen.